Welcome to your screencast for lesson 7.6. Today we are going to be looking at renaming fractions and mixed numbers. So our essential question is how can you rename mixed numbers as fractions greater than one and rename fractions greater than one as mixed numbers. So essentially when our numerator becomes bigger than our denominator our fraction is greater than one. So if we jump down to the unlock the problem it says Mr. Fox has two and three sixths loaves of cornbread. Each loaf was cut into one sixth size pieces. If he has 14 people over for dinner, is there enough bread for each person to have one piece? So we need to identify that we have two and three sixths loaves of bread and that each loaf is cut into one sixth size pieces. And ultimately, is he going to have enough bread for 14 people? Okay. So what is the size of one piece of bread relative to the whole? Well, one piece of bread is one-sixth of the whole. We've already identified that the bread has been cut into six equal pieces. How much bread does Mr. Fox need for 14 people? Well, he ultimately would need 14 sixth sized pieces or 14 over six. Again, this now becomes, our numerator now becomes larger than our denominator. So we are going to eventually change this number into a mixed number. A mixed number is a number representative by, represented by a whole number and a fraction. So what we have up here, the two and three six, is a mixed number because it has a whole number and it has a fraction. You can write a mixed number as a fraction. To find how many one six size pieces are in two and three six, write two and three six as a fraction. So two and three six equals one whole, because we're going to break this whole into two holes, one whole, one whole, and then our three six. Okay, we're breaking them down by steps. So we have one, one, and then we have three one six. Next, we're going to break it down even further, and we know from our lesson that we did 7.4 and 7.3, we know that one whole is going to be equal to six out of six parts in this case because our bread is broken into six pieces. So we would have six six, that would be representative of one loaf of bread, and another six six would be representative of a second loaf of bread, and then three six for our final part of the bread. Okay, so then it says find the total number of one six size pieces in two and three six. So we're going to find six over six plus six over six plus three over six. So we're going to add our numerators just like we've been doing because we have the same denominator. So six plus six is 12 plus three is 15. Okay, so there are 15 six size pieces in two and three six. So yes, there is enough bread for 14 people. Sorry, let me slide this up. So yes, there is enough bread for 14 people because we have 15 pieces, okay? All right, go ahead and flip to the next page. On the next page, it says write a fraction greater than one as a mixed number. So to weave a bracelet, Charlene needs seven pieces of brown thread. I feel like that's going to be important. Each piece of thread must be one third yard long. How much thread should she buy to weave the bracelet? Well, in this case, we have seven pieces that need to be three yards long. So our fraction is going to be seven over three. So we need to convert that to a mixed number, okay? So if we go over here and we look at our model, our model shows us broken into seven sections that are three yards long each, okay? So we're breaking them into thirds. So seven thirds would be broken up into seven unit fractions of one over three. Remember how we talked about a unit fraction is a numerator of one over the denominator, okay? Now step two, it says find how many holes are in seven three and how many thirds are left over. Well, we know that three out of three is going to represent a whole. So in this case, we've got three out of three. Sorry, let me line that up. Three out of three. So that would be one. 
And then we have a second set of three out of three. And that would be one. And then we have one third section left over. So in this case, our mixed number would be one plus one. So we'd add our whole numbers, that would be two. And our fraction would be one third. So two and one third. So Charlene should buy two and one thirds yard of thread. Okay, you are going to move on to the Sharon show. You are looking at completing number four and number seven. Okay, just really quick since this hasn't been very long, there is another way to figure out if we go back to our first problem where we're looking at um, writing a mixed number as a fraction. There is a mathematical way to do it. So if we have two and three six, all you're gonna do is you're gonna multiply the denominator times the whole number. So two times six would be 12. And then you add the numerator plus three. So two times six is 12 plus three. That would give us 15 over six. So the equation would be denominator, denominator, times whole number plus numerator. And that would give us, that would equal, and that would be our new numerator. And our denominator would remain the same, okay? So if we are given a mixed number, which would be a whole number plus a fraction, we can multiply the denominator times the whole number, add the numerator, that becomes our new numerator, and our denominator would remain the same. Okay, so that would be the mathematical way for converting a mixed number as a fraction. And then if we move back to the second example, there is a mathematical way to do this as well. Seven over three, all we're gonna do is we're gonna divide by our denominator. So seven divided by three, we know that three can go into seven two times, okay? And we have a remainder of one, because three will go in two times, that only goes to six, we have a remainder of one. Our remainder becomes our new numerator, and then our denominator always remains the same. So the mathematical way to write a fraction greater than one as a mixed number would be to divide the numerator by the denominator, take the remainder, becomes the new numerator, your denominator is going to remain the same, okay? So there's two ways to do it. You can break it up using the models or you can also use the mathematical way. You're gonna complete number four and number seven.